motion, want to move ahead. Teaching is more than just a job for me. It's a calling. And can I ask how many teachers are in the audience here? I know a lot of you teachers feel the same way. Our students give us so much. They keep us grounded and inspire us. Thank you for joining this Biden-Harris campaign back to school event in Green Bay, Wisconsin with Jill Biden. And now please welcome Wisconsin State Treasurer, Sarah Godlewski. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. In fact, you are joining me from my kitchen, which has somehow now become my son's playroom and learning room, which I know a lot of parents can relate to. Um, it's great to be able to welcome Dr. Jill Biden to Green Bay. And we're also really lucky because we have a few amazing moms who are able to take time from their busy schedules to join us for a conversation about parenting, work, and reopening schools, which, I know is top of mind for many of us as our schools, a lot of them opened last week, some in person, some virtually, as we are rolling up our sleeves and doing the best we can. Um, so in preparation uh, for today, I started thinking about when this pandemic hit back in March. And as a new mom, I vividly remember that day when we got news about the shutdown. And I remember I talked to my husband and I said, what are we gonna do about childcare? Who's gonna take care of our, our baby? Um, we both have full-time jobs and we just can't walk away from them. And I know that I am not alone in this predicament as many working parents, their lives were literally turned upside down as instantly we started seeing ourselves with now two full-time jobs. Um, our one job that pays the bills but the other job is we are now helping to take care and educate our, our kids, whether it's in between conference calls, our Zoom conversations, um, and really working to balance it all. And so I'll be honest, when this happened back in March, I thought by now, the beginning of September, that our kids would be back in school and life would be back to normal. But we know this is, couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, we look at COVID cases in Wisconsin and it's on an upward trend. On September 4th last week, that day alone, we had almost 1,500 COVID cases reported. Wow. And you wonder what's going on? Well, my question is, where's the leadership from the White House with this? I mean, it's six months later and we still do not have a united plan for the United States. 
We're competing with Minnesota and Iowa and Michigan for supplies. And, and then when it comes to our schools, the only option that the White House has given is to take away funding. Yeah, <laughs> Betsy DeVos has literally said, if you don't open schools, we're gonna take away your funding. We need schools to be set up for success and to ensure that we have the resources to keep our kids safe and healthy. Look, from the conversations I've been having with fellow moms, it's clear, we want our kids back in school, but not at a risk to our kids or to our community. And that's honestly why I'm really proud to stand with Vice President Biden and his plan to reopen our schools safely. Yes, I said it, Joe's got a plan. <laughs> and for starters, he wants to get this virus under control. For example, providing uniform guidance on how to implement safety protocols for ventilation in schools and how to set up classrooms. And then he also wants to actually provide adequate resources. So we're not just giving implementation, he's actually funding that so our kids are safe and healthy. And finally, he wants to make investments because we know it's incredibly challenging to provide a quality education during COVID. So making investments in things like technology. Um, and we experience that firsthand every day, the lack of broadband here in Wisconsin. So one of the things though that's missing from Joe's plan and what I think is one of the best part of Joe's plan is his amazing partner, Dr. Jill Biden. <laughs> and why you might ask? Well, I wanna really point out two things. One is that Jill is a mom and she's a grandma. She has the same things that we face every day that keep us up at night as parents. But the other piece that I think is really important and as a child of two public educators is Jill is a teacher. She's been in the classroom for decades and understands firsthand what it's gonna take to get our schools back on track and to do that in a way that is at no risk to our kids or our communities. So, Dr. Biden, are you ready to talk about reopening our schools safely? Yes, I am. So, thank you, Sarah. You said that so beautifully, except for the in the classroom for decades part. <laughs> well, I think you what? I think I read you've been teaching on and off for 30 years. Was that it? <laughs> 36. Oh! 36, yes. <laughs> exactly for 36 years that's incredible so sarah you know they say that uh budgets are moral documents and i know that you've fought hard to <laughs> help wisconsin's budget represent our values so i want to thank you for your for your comments and your work and your support and thank you to everyone who's here today and i'm so happy to join everybody so uh, like we just said, even after more than 30 years of teaching, I still get excited at the start of a new school year. And uh, I love the possibility of brand new clean notebooks and the smell of freshly waxed floors. And I love the sounds, you know, the quiet just before the students shuffle in, the murmur of ideas bouncing back and forth as we explore the world together the laughter and the tiny moments of surprise you find in materials that you've taught a million times. But this year, for educators and parents alike, those feelings of excitement have turned into anxiety. And our playgrounds are still. Some classrooms are dark as the bright young faces that should fill them are now confined to boxes on a computer screen just like all of you. And while other classrooms are open, they're full of unknowns. And all summer long, friends and family and colleagues have been asking me the same things. Will schools reopen? And should we send our kids if they do? And like I heard you say, how, many, how am I supposed to juggle working and overseeing my kids' learning? And how do I keep my family safe? Today, we're here with moms who are having to answer those questions for their families. In the Green Bay area, classes have already started virtually. 
Even with the best of planning, that will come with challenges, especially for those children who are most vulnerable during this time. And I know that there are lots of educators and parents who are losing sleep with worry and anxiety right now. And yet, schools are finding ways to meet this challenge. They're making sure kids still get the breakfasts and lunches they need. They're making sure that they have the technology to keep up. Parents, too, are figuring this out. And they're bringing every ounce of creativity and care and love to making sure their children continue to learn. Because that's what we do. We find ways to make something out of nothing, to see beauty in challenges, and to mentor and guide children, even through chaos. Across this country, Americans of all walks of life are putting their shoulders back and fighting for each other. We haven't given up. We just need leadership worthy of our nation, worthy of all of you. And no one knows resilience like my husband, Joe. And he's faced his share of trials and, and tragedies. Our family has been knocked down and our hearts have certainly been shattered. And through it all, he learned how to heal a broken family. And it's the same way you heal a nation with love and understanding, with small acts of kindness, with bravery, with unwavering faith. You show up for each other in big ways and small ones, again and again, and he will show up for you. He's ready to get to work making our schools safe and equitable for all children on day one. He knows that schools and childcare providers are going to need funds to help them keep staff and children safe with protective gear. They're going to need help making sure classrooms can, you know, physically distance and make sure that students have access to broadband and other technology if we continue to rely on remote learning. Both students and educators are going to need more mental health support to deal with the trauma of this pandemic. And going forward, we're going to have to make big changes to the status quo because this crisis has shined a bright light on the systemic inequities in our education system. We need to identify best practices to address these gaps and provide funding to implement them. When Joe is president, he and Vice President Kamala Harris are going to make sure that we do all those things. But most of all, Joe knows that the best policies don't come from politics. They come from listening to parents and students and educators. And that's why I'm here today and why I've been on a back to school tour, visiting cities across this country to listen to you, to better understand what each community needs whether it's serving students of color, English language learners, students with disabilities, or low-income families. We're going to talk about access to technology, food insecurity, and mental health support. And I'm gonna take that back to our campaign so that we can be ready on day one to turn this around. So I wanna thank everyone for being here and sharing your stories. And now, Sarah, I'm gonna pass it back to you. Well, thank you, Dr. Biden. And it, it, this all reminds me of something, actually, my mom, who is a special ed teacher in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, said to me when I first got elected, she said, Sarah, now that you're a politician, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Do more listening and less talking. <laughs> and so I'm excited about this conversation today because to your point, it's about listening to what parents Mm -hmm. and administrators and teachers are struggling with and how to take that back um, because it's real life that we're seeing. And so uh, I have the honor of actually introducing our moms, which quite frankly, after their name, it should probably say SM because they're super moms after reading <laughs> um, their resumes. And I'm going to start with Amanda Chu because she's actually a mother of three um, balancing ages three, four, and six. 
Um, and they're all a part wow. of the Green Bay School District. Um, and honestly, Dr. Biden, like you, Amanda works at a local technical college. Oh. Um, and if that's not enough, she's also working on getting her MBA. Good for oh. you. Good for and, you, Amanda. And Thank one you. And one other thing I just have to wrap and then I'm going to pass it over to her is that she's also an elected official and she serves on the county board. <laughs> so, I mean, Amanda is like the superwoman. So, Amanda, yes, I'll, I'll pass it over to you. Okay. Oh, well, thank you, Sarah. And um, I, I'm, I'm the person feeling really honored right now being here with Erin and um, with you, Dr. Biden, and you, Sarah. So, thank you for the intro. Um, so. I mean, I'll just share a little bit more of the details around what Sarah led in with an intro for me. But, um, you know, we've been here for seven and a half years and we moved to Green Bay, Wisconsin. My husband's from here and I was pregnant with our first child and we didn't know um, how many we were going to have or how deeply we'd end up digging into community and trying to, to serve our area because it's just kind of the heart that we bring around when we go place to place and so now we've landed here and really started to dig in and grow our family to a family of five of us and now we have kids school age um, our middle is 4k and just starting school at we have a wildlife sanctuary outdoor nature-based school and um, you know unfortunately that's a hundred percent virtual learning so um, the educators are incredible the naturalist is incredible um, and they make that work as best that they can and then we have another our oldest is just beginning first grade and um and then our little three-year-old she just runs around and um she's probably she's supervising the household while we're all <laughs> trying to take care of the work that we do and the school that we do and i'm in school full time and my husband and i both are small business owners and we run those businesses out of our home so um our house is you know both our workplace it's our relax relaxation place and um it's it's a sanctuary for many things and you know now we've had to really condense our our social activity and it's just been the five of us for for so long with some grandparents and um it, we've found lots of ways to make it work and it's probably because you know we're in a privileged position and we've been educated and um have had support social support for us to put us in the position that we can be providing, you know, really thoughtful um, care in this time. But all of that comes under under stressful moments. Like every day there's there's the um, the reality of trying to pack a lot into a schedule, like managing the multiple shared calendars and attending all of the meetings. You know, our our supervisor meetings had been virtual which was a lot easier for those of us um, with small children um, but now those have moved so majority of those have moved to in-person so now we shift mm -hmm. again um, and it's taken a lot of really flexible thinking and all of that and it's a it's constant it's constant adjustments for us and a lot of communication even when we're super exhausted like we're up past midnight last night looking at the schedule trying to figure out um who's Bye. taking kids for an hour here for an hour there um because you know i want to jump on this call and contribute to the conversation and and all of those things and um i i probably after we shift into new normal and we can start emerging and you know that's going to be made possible with the biden harris plan um mm -hmm we won't really realize all the things we were holding on our great big shoulders and to make it work and it's not just us in this household that's taken the entire community the entire education community yeah. up here and all of that so amanda how are you handling the anxiety that you're feeling um i'm i'm lucky thanks for asking that's such an important question the i have incredible sisters and friends and all of that we've kind of implicitly made a pact to be brutally honest and to not worry of if that sounds like negative speak or anything like that because there's this double standard as women and mothers you know we're supposed to do it all and kind of smile and really enjoy it and there's like a feeling of guilt when we're not nailing it and so um 
I think we've given ourselves permission to be brutally honest in those moments and ask for help. And I didn't start learning that until I became a mom because it was crushing to not learn how to ask for help. But it wasn't something that I had learned as a young woman growing up that I needed to do that. So it's, it's taken a lot of um, support from other people around. Yeah, you feel, um, if you feel like you're not handling it, I think you feel like this sense of failure, like, oh, I should be able to balance all these things. And yet it's really hard. And, and, and you know, in this time of the pandemic, when we don't have really uh, a community, right, that we can physically, I mean, that we can be with, I mean, it's so hard because you feel, you feel isolated. And I think, you know, I have four sisters and I'm, I'm very fortunate because, you know, when I need that time, I, I just call up my sister, Bonnie, and say, hey, do you mind if I come over, <laughs> you know, for a glass of wine for, uh, you know, an hour? And um, so we need, I think we're all missing that sense of community because of this pandemic. And it's important. I think these relationships that we have, yeah, thank you for that. Um, yeah, that that has been really an important piece to making this work. So I look forward to being part of the rest of the discussion and hearing from Erin. So thank you, Sarah. Well, thank you, Amanda. And uh, the other super mom who's able to join us today is Erin Bears. And Erin is also a mother of three kids. Um, <laughs> but her kids are at a little different age. So she has two daughters, one in college and one in high school. And then she also has her son, Ty, who is a special needs student in um, the De Pierre School District. So and we were mentioning, um, Dr. Byandin, about resiliency and how resiliency uh -huh. is really important. Important. And that is when I was reading about Erin and talking to Erin today, that's exactly she is the definition of resilience because COVID has not only impacted her children, but also her and her husband's careers. Um, so I'll let Erin um, share more of her story. Erin, you're on mute. So you can just, there you go. I know, this technology nowadays. I know, I tell you, my goodness. Because you never know these days in Wisconsin as well. So, but I am honored to be here and to be having this conversation with obviously such intelligent, wonderful women and on a path for Joe Biden and Harris. So um, super supportive of that. And also you, Dr. Biden, with your teaching career. My mom was a high school teacher for many oh. years. Yep. What did you teach? She taught high school English. Oh, that's what I teach. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. She actually, she, uh, she has since passed of cancer. I used to substitute, oh. her, substitute in her classes. So I know how hard you guys work as teachers and teachers around the state and the administration as well. Um, everyone who puts their backbone into daily academics for our children is so important. So thank you. Um, um, my story is I'm happily married for 21 years to my great husband, Brian. He uh, sells medical equipment to hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, and so when the pandemic hit, um, that was quite a struggle because hospitals too were learning and making adjustments. And so he was not allowed back into hospitals until fairly recently, a very slow back process, just like kids going back to school. Um, at the time, I was working for a bank and doing the essential work of bankers. So I was working overtime, um, making sure that we're getting the PPP loans and the SBA loans and all of those that needed to go out mm -hmm. um, so to help with funding for small business companies. Um, but as we learned with schools, I do have three. I have one in college at UW-Eau Claire, and that's my beautiful Taylor. And that's a struggle as well, because she did have to come home. I think it was March, maybe, or I think it was uh -huh. when she came home. And her mental health. So I was so happy that you guys brought up mental health, because this is a difficult time. Um, so she definitely struggled coming back, finding her way in college, loving it, her sorority, everything, and then being back home with mom and dad. And when you're 20 years old, you do not want to be living with mom and dad. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, 
when I have my sweet little Madison and she's at Green Bay Preble, so here in the Green Bay School District, and she is now virtually 100%. And um, she's a very determined, very determined uh, lady. And so she does well in any situation that she's in, but it has made an impact because she cannot, um, you know, friendships. Sure of growing up, learning basic social dating behaviors she's no longer getting. Um, I think the schools did a phenomenal job. Um, and then I have Ty, and Ty's autistic, and we put him into public schools, but into peer, um, just one little short hop away. And uh, he needs to be every single day, it needs to be almost the same, he has to have a system. So obviously, for all of us, this really impacted every single one of us. And when they said Ty would go back to school two days, but home for three, I had to quit my job. Yeah. So, and so how are you managing that? Um, well, we're just starting back. So losing my job because I was at home for years because he was in therapy for seven years of applied behavior analysis therapy, um, almost 40 hours a week. And so I was home and left my career early on. So I just went back within the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. So then to have to I just felt like a piece of me was gone again, too, as well. Sure. Yeah, it's hard, you know, um, to try to figure out you know, how, how to work. And obviously, I mean, um, that's not a choice for you right now. I mean, it probably will be again, obviously, but who knows how long that's going to be. And that's why it's so important that, you know, we work really hard to end this pandemic because it didn't have to be this way. Right. You know, if this administration had done a better job, it didn't have to be this way. Right. So, you have to, you know, as soon as we get this under control, you can get back to work and Ty can get back to school. Right, absolutely, absolutely. And Erin um, and Amanda, I think one of the things that you guys have both shared is how you all have different experiences, both with how this was going in the spring versus now with school uh, starting for what, you've been in school now for about a week in the fall, Maybe can you share how things are going and um, what have been maybe the hardest adjustments that you've been experiencing? Yeah, so it looks very different, I think, from the spring into the going into the fall. Um, the spring, it was a knee-jerk reaction um, for teachers, for families, for students alike. So um, we were in very much reactionary mode. We weren't able to kind of process the, what we were going to do, what the school was going to do, how, what were the teachers. Um, so it was a little chaotic. So the, going into the fall, I believe it looks different because I think school districts and amazing teachers all did come together and say, how is this now going to work? Um, is it perfect now? No, but the kids know their expectations for the day. They know how long they're going to be on with a teacher for every class. They know um, how much work time then they'll have between classes. My son's a little different because um, how do you do a block with special needs kids for four hours straight? Because um, they're used to, you know, eight kids in a classroom with two teachers. And now they're stuck with mom and the teachers have, know they can't hold, you know, them to listening to them for four hours straight rather than interacting yeah. so that part is different and hard um uh, but I, I think that the direction that the school districts have the administration has been given um not from the leadership above but within themselves that they are really understanding and also listening to parents and what can they do Obviously in Wisconsin, it's been mentioned technology in houses. We, we don't, we're not to the point of where if they were in school face to face. So we're really lacking when it comes to um, being able to have five different computers when all five of us are home going yeah. all at once. <laughs> uh, so we get knocked out a lot. In fact, my daughter's Chromebook, they're on the Chromebooks in Green Bay. She can't keep it going for even a single class period. So she steals my computer. So it's not perfect. We have to get back in school. We have to do it right. Mm -hmm. But I love how you're managing it all. I mean, how are you managing the four hours for your son? So is it 
condensed now or or do they expect you to do part of that um, part of that time? I mean, how does that work? Well, we had great discussions with um, his fabulous teachers. It's just uh, they can't. They they know they can't just talk to a special yeah. ed class for four hours, and that's his block. So um, they give us a lot of at home projects. We have to go to the grocery store. We have to cook with them. We have to, you know, do the money part with them. All of the things that they can implement in such a perfect way. And I'm not a special ed teacher. No. So, and I don't have the skills that they went to school for. So I mean, I know my son but I don't have the skills as a special ed teacher. So I think that makes it a little bit difficult for him, for me, um, for my husband who did the teaching in back in the fall because he was home and I wasn't. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we did our best and we'll continue to do so, but it's not perfect. No, it's not perfect. And you know, I really have to say that everyone is just doing the, the best that they can, you know, and I think, um, you know, I have to say, I think the teachers have done an amazing job. Like you're saying in the spring, nobody knew where we, were, where we were going with everything. But now that things have settled a little bit, I think it's gotten a little bit easier, but there's still a lot of challenges. And um, that's why we've got to get back. I mean, you know, and I know that you're supportive of my husband. And I mean, I feel like at least he has a strategy to get us back on track. I mean, we all have to work together to do this. And, um, and I just feel like, you know, everything is just so chaotic and we, we need a leader. I mean, we've got to have leadership to give us direction, you know, to come up with a national strategy and then work with the doctors and the scientists to come up with a plan for each, you know, and the CDC work with them to come up with how to handle it for each district. So there's a lot of challenges there, but I feel that, you know, we can be hopeful because if Joe's elected, at least there will be a plan in place. Absolutely. Well, and, and Dr. Biden, you said it, we need to say it over and over again. Joe has a plan. Joe has a plan because I think that is <laughs> a critical difference between what we are seeing out of the White House today. Yeah. And I, now that we have the super mom Amanda also with us, who is um, a part of the, the county board, Amanda, I guess I wanted um, to maybe get your insights. You talked about mom guilt and how you're managing everything. And um, is there any recommendations you have or things for us to consider when you look at how things are going this fall? Um, well, in spring, just comparing spring to fall, um, there, there were some aspects of spring that were a little bit easier for us because there was less um, pressure of, to do so much synchronous learning. So in in spring, we were just kind of given some topics and given some some useful tools and then we could implement them and kind of do them at home as we could. But again, like to, to Aaron's point, we're not trained teachers. Um, and so, you know, we're dancing in between being a parent and being an educator for our kids, but we are able to adjust and kind of make it work in our schedule. But now for fall, because my husband has taken like a lot of that primary um, educator role and like managing some household things and in otherwise I would not be able to do that list of things that um, Sarah, Sarah mentioned because um, there's just not enough time in the day to do all of that. And so in fall, what we're seeing just in this week, it's been, it's been hard to do so much synchronous learning for seven hours a day, just for one of the children. And then the other two have different needs and um, they're, they need change in environment and all of that too. So we're still, we're still figuring that out. And I, I'm so grateful with um, Green Bay Area School District because they've, they're showing some flexibility with how they're accounting for students participating in, in being in school. So even there's like a certain platform where activities happen. And so, you know, as long as they engage on that within school hours, you know, if we can't make one of the meetings, they record it and we can catch up and 
So there's some flexibility there. And I just don't know what we do if there wasn't that. And the only reason all of this is working is because of all of the things you're mentioning, Dr. Biden, these people caring, being compassionate, mm -hmm. being competent, and making it work. And it's just not fair for that to be what holds the entire system up. Like we need that structure and that leadership at all levels to to make this a really successful experience where students can actually flourish it's not that we're all just getting by because we have a lot of smart well-meaning big-hearted people in all of these places holding up the work of that so and what do you think is the biggest challenge for your what are your kids saying to you i know they're little but what are what are they saying to you what are their big challenges um they so our, our one that's in um, Gratian, he's in first grade, and he, he doesn't exactly understand when the teacher's really asking something of him. I think it's hard for him to stay engaged a little bit watching uh -huh. a teacher on a screen. And um, and then he doesn't have, I think Aaron mentioned, that accountability piece. So it's hard for, you know, yeah. the being in that school setting, you kind of put a different standard around yourself, like, oh, yeah, I have this sort of etiquette around me. And so that's kind of missing. And so we have a hard time focusing in to get the work done. And then do you incorporate like uh, phys ed during the day or physical activity? What do you do for that? Yeah, well, it's all, it's a rainy day today, but, um, you know, Gray will jump on his bike and ride around the block a couple times in between classes. <laughs> um, they have a uh, like one one day a week, um, phys ed, uh, it's a part of their specials program. And so, you know, the Mr. B jumps on and has the kids, we take video because it's just so cute, um, the kids doing their exercises all together. But I hear in each of the teacher's voices for each of the specials or, you know, the the homeroom teacher, it's just like, we wish we could be with you. We, we miss you. Like, we're teachers because we love spending time with you yeah. and we know that we can't do that right now. Um, so all of them, you know, the music teacher, it was music class today. And what did you do for music class? Um, we have a bunch of in, just instruments. None of us are like that good at any one thing, but I think, um, <laughs> you know, we have enough fun stuff all around like a ukulele, Gray Graham yeah. grabbed a hand jump today. And so, you know, the kids can control whether they're muted or unmuted. And that's another thing, like the, the classes are kind of constantly disrupted. So it's hard to get any good flow mm -hmm. of thought from the, from the teacher because students can kind of be popping on and off. So, so those are some of the challenges that the students and teachers are facing when they're kind of in this format. But yeah, you just grab an instrument, make sure you're on mute and go for it. That's how music class was. <laughs> Make sure you're on mute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the teachers are, you know, I think it's really amazing, um, like I said, to see, you know, what the teachers are doing. I think parents now, when they go, when their kids go back to school, there's going to be uh, such a stronger relationship, I think, um, built with teachers because I think parents are now saying, oh, before we used to think, oh, teachers, you know, they get off at three, it's so easy. But they're really seeing, you know, what's involved. And I think it's great that now parents and teachers are working together, you know, to help the kids. Yeah, it's agreed. Nice and I, I think, think, I think well, we'll be trusting our public schools in a totally different way. And, you know, hopefully with a you know, with the Biden Harris plan, there's the, there's a path to really support them economically and give them all the resources they need. Yes, to do it better. So that's really hopeful. And you know, I'm I'm con personally I'm concerned about the the longevity of public schools in this in this format because the private schools aren't beholden to some of the other standards that our, our public schools are instituting. And so, you know, I do have friends that have opted to do private education or move to total homeschool curriculum. And um, we'll see kind of what the impact is on that for public schools going forward. Well, could you give me an example of like one of the standards that you feel that uh, public schools have imposed, but private schools don't? Well, for Green Bay, since we're 100% um, 
um, virtual, some of the private schools have opted to be in person or do something 50-50 or offer 50% education and then do modified um, childcare. And so for parents that must work, mm -hmm. you know, they, that's, that's valuable to them. And if they can make the payments on that and, you know, the private, private schools offer great education too. It's just that, um, the students that's money that's going that's leaving the public school system and they're losing they're losing the resources that they need and like Erin's put her special needs son into public schools because they provide incredible incredible um education mm -hmm. and support for for all students of all abilities and of all backgrounds so that's not something our private schools are, are really providing they can be really exclusive with who they're and serving. Are the private schools, are the classes a lot smaller? Are they about the same as the public school classes? Um, they're they're up here. I've seen that they're about the same. I don't know if you have a different experience, Erin. I think that um, they are around my area, definitely a lot smaller. So I've been talking with parents that have opted to put their kids into private school and they are a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. And are they offering scholarships for these kids to attend the private schools? Well, we have up here, so you can, uh, different from kind of what I do with Ty, but we have the school choice now, so you can put your kid with public funding into private schools in our area. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Well, and I would love to continue this conversation actually all afternoon. Um, <laughs> we've only started to really get into things but um unfortunately we are running out of time and i think one thing is really clear that at the end of the day we are in this together um and it's parents working with teachers who are working with administrators and staff to make sure our kids get the best education possible and to do that safely because we know it's not easy but if we do this together um, we'll get through it. And I think the other big theme that we've really heard today is we will be able to do it with a plan that Vice President Biden will be able to provide us. Um, so just one thing I want to kind of emphasize before I turn it back over to Dr. Biden is that Wisconsin, we have 58 days till the election. That's it. And so we know the road to the White House runs through our state. And so we need your help because it is all hands on deck. So if you have not gotten involved or consider getting involved, um, please feel free to text cheese. Yes, that's right. I said <laughs> cheese. 30330. That's three. 30330 and they'll tell you ways that you can get involved how to register um because we can't do this alone and we know we are better when we do this together so thanks to the moms for joining us today for sharing those amazing stories i know it's not easy especially rearranging your life um to be on this call and dr biden thank you for being here and i'll just turn it over to you you know thank you again to sarah for leading us today and thank you, Amanda and Aaron, for sharing your stories. You know, parents, educators, students, no one wants to get kids back to school more than we do. You know, but we know we have to do it safely. And as a mom and a nana, I know that parents will do absolutely anything to give their children the future they deserve. And you know this, we organize, we advocate, we get things done and this is our moment to shine. So from now until election day, I'm asking you to do three things. Number one, go to IWillVote.com to check your registration to vote and make sure that you have a plan. Two, volunteer. Now these two moms, you know, I'm amazed if they can fit volunteering in, but if you could do just one thing maybe a day, I don't know, to get involved. And this election is too consequential for you to sit out. So like Sarah said, and cheese is perfect for Wisconsin. So um, so text cheese, like she said, 30330. 
Or three, talk to your friends and family. I mean, we've got to talk to everybody, right? We have to help them make a plan to vote. And, you know, you can offer to drive people to polls. So this is going to take all of us. So together, we can get our kids back to school and we can make sure that students and their families are safe. So thanks for all you're doing to lift up your communities during this time. And really, thank you for your faith in something that's bigger than all of us and that we can build a better world because of you, because we're going to do this together. So thank you. Thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.